All right. Yes, I see the little recording icon, so we are good to go. Welcome, everybody, uh, to our webinar, Making WordPress the Best Headless CMS. My name is Jeff Everhart, and I'm joined by my colleagues on one of our software development teams focused on FaustJS, uh, Theo. And Joe was supposed to be here today, and maybe he will still make an appearance later, uh, but he had some weather issues in New York some powder, power outages and stuff. Um, so actually Blake is gonna stand in for, for Joe today. So definitely um, we had to make this last minute lineup change. Um, so hopefully we'll still get you some good information, but if not, well, these are two really cool features that we're excited about launching over the coming months. So you'll definitely see a little bit more uh, information about them. And Sam, our community manager just popped up uh, one of our first poll questions. So this data is really helpful for us as we sort of plan the different product features around all of the different things we're making in the headless ecosystem. So help us do that by giving us all this accurate poll data. So again, the title of our talk today is Making WordPress the Best Headless CMS. Um, and I got a little joke to share that I think is funny. Uh, so we share obviously this webinar with a lot of different groups and we actually had a comment in Reddit. So if anybody's here from Reddit, thanks for coming. Uh, but they were like, what do you mean making it the best? Isn't it already the best? So I think, you know, Theo, Blake, all of my colleagues at WP Engine, we can just wrap it up and go home because mission accomplished uh, on making WordPress the best headless CMS. But that doesn't mean we can't make it better. Um, and so that is sort of our goal for today. Uh, but to kind of set the stage a little bit. Um, let me share some information uh, that you all would likely want to know. Um, we have our annual Decode conference coming up next month. Um, so you can see there we've got sort of different time slots based on where you are geographically. So definitely come and register. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different events focused on headless WordPress uh, and some other cool stuff as well. So not just headless, but uh, sharing a lot of information about our evolving product line with like the acquisition of Delicious Brain plugin. So, so many amazing, amazing things are coming to the WordPress space, headless or not. Uh, definitely uh, be there or be square, if you will. Um, and I'll have another slide at the end and we can share this link to the event registration in the chat, but definitely join us there. Um, so one of the things I want to just get out of the way is just etiquette alert. Uh, please be excellent to everybody in the chat. Um, believe it or not, we have this slide because people have not been excellent to people in the chat before. So please be excellent. Uh, this is being recorded and the chat is going to be saved. So anything that you put in there uh, will get sort of saved in posterity and people may look at it. Uh, I don't think we actually really have any sort of shared demo resources today. Um, so I think we can skip that one uh, for now. But so I do want to talk a little bit about our goals today, right? Because we came, came up with an ambitious headline for this presentation, making WordPress the best headless CMS. Um, and I think a lot of people who are interested in headless WordPress and who've been working with it, you know, know that there are still some rough edges around this site building methodology. Um, and we're definitely working here at WP Engine to help smooth those out for people. And so some of the things that we're going to look at today is how you can basically double down on using the block editor, uh, using this new uh, WP GraphQL extension called WP GraphQL Content Blocks, and then sort of a component library that the Faust team is working on uh, that's going to support core blocks. Um, and we'll get to hear about some next steps. You'll get to see like what the state of the field is on that particular plugin from Theo. And then definitely hear about some next steps around what the Faust team is planning to build out next. And those include things like more, uh, you know, more advanced rich text parsing API. So if we have a paragraph with links or images, how do we kind of get at those and manipulate those? into JavaScript components, and then some of the team's theory, working theories about around uh, like reusing blocks between the CMS uh, and the front end. And then unless Joe makes an appearance, we will hear from Blake around uh, using the headless WordPress admin bar. And this, you know, again, is going to help bring some of the affordances for the content publisher that exists in native WordPress into headless WordPress. And I personally think that's a really cool space, especially when you combine that with a platform like Atlas. Like we have a lot of really interesting ways that we can make those two things work really well together. So it should make editing and updating a headless site feel almost as native as a, you know, a, a native WordPress site for logged in users. And then there's also some ways that that can be pluggable or extendable so that, you know, we can add in all sorts of buttons that clear your CDN cache or, you know, rebuild a, a static page directly from a preview page, all sorts of really cool things um, that I'm sure the community uh, will, will come up with great ideas for. Yeah. So without further ado, I think I will uh, kick it over to Theo, who's going to get us started talking about WP GraphQL content blocks 
and uh, block support in Faust.js. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and we'll kick it over to Theo. Perfect. Thank you, Zef. Yeah, it's, I am Theo. I'm uh, one of the engineers uh, working with uh, Faust and the Faust framework. And I have uh, basically today for, for you, I have a couple of uh, I have a couple of slides to showcase and a demo demonstration about uh, a few blocks live. Uh, I would develop it, and you know we can also uh, take questions after that. So uh, let's start a small presentation here. Uh, so yeah, uh, so as a team uh, working on Faust, uh, we just like to uh, figure out ways to. Uh, bring Gutenberg and headless WordPress together uh, because currently uh, the design goals of Gutenberg are not actually uh, friendly in this, in this area. So we have to make sure uh, we adapt, you know, we make sure we create adapters or bridges. So development is easier uh, and more effortless, and, you know, it, development or ergonomics is are better. So the agenda for today is or all my, my part of the slides are, uh, I'm gonna explain the an overview of the problem, uh, what our proposed solution, uh, what we propose to, to have to offer for this, uh, for this bridging. Uh, we're gonna have a demo and maybe at the end, we're gonna have any questions or answers, you know, uh, about more technical stuff or in, in general, you know. So, so the problem, you know, uh, if you work with uh, Gutenberg and you want to create, you know, work with headless and Gutenberg, you will uh, definitely see the first problem is, you know, the, there's no native support for blocks. You have to figure out your own solution, uh, pick and mix stuff, uh, plugins, frameworks, JavaScript libraries. Uh, and, you know, there's no opinions, you know, it's really free. So when you have too many opinions, you 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 tend to have you know have something that is not scalable or maybe works on a particular situation and it's not portable across the problems you know so yeah solutions do exist but you know you have to figure out your way to, through this you know through the problems and you know if you're an agency for example you want to deliver products you want to build the websites and you are gonna have to spend a lot of development time figuring out stuff you know. It would be nice to have some sort of packet solution ready for you to just uh, with an opinionated guide to test, take it and sure that it, it works uh, and it's also reusable, you know. So, yeah, so you have to, uh, to, you know, you have to manage your own stuff. So and there's a lot of things that, you know, if you if you still working on it, you know, you are building blocks, you still have to deal with styling, how you can manage styles. Things are really like uh, bare bones. They're not basically good options. How about you know the usability? How you can take those blocks and use them in different places, different websites without rewriting them again? You know, dynamic blocks. Another thing. You know, you, there are blocks that there are rendered only on the server side. No, no. I mean, no React, just JavaScript. You know, there's a lot of combinations of it. You know. Inner blocks, you know, how to do this uh, combination of blocks within blocks, block patterns. All of this stuff is like just free. There's no opinion. So you just choose to do whatever you want. But with this, it creates a lot of issues, you know, because you don't create a lot of, uh, you know, friction. You don't know what to do. So I have to figure out. So you spend more development time. So you're not delivering products. So it's still a, a big trade off, you know. So our solution. Uh, consists of two things. You know, first is the plugin. There's a Gutenberg blocks plugin. Uh, it extends extends the WP GraphQL uh, API. Uh, it's called the WP GraphQL content blocks. And the the second one is the Faust connector. This is like a plugin uh, package for our Faust framework. And both of those two pieces together, they work in you know conjunction. We use them both together so we can uh, have a universal, I suppose, uh, experience between uh, the back end and the front end. Uh, so what are the benefits? Uh, we we choose this approach because you have an end-to-end -end 
at least an end-to-end -end solution to the problem, opinionated, of course. Uh, you don't have to figure out uh, things. We provided you some abstractions that will help development time. Uh, you know, you save development time because you don't have to. For you know, you don't have to figure out your own ways of doing things. We provide some specific conventions. Uh, you can also use blocks or block patterns in combination as well. There's uh, this flexibility, and we also promote reusability in terms of you know uh, designing your blocks in a way that you can uh, import them from a package and use them in many. Many projects, you know, you start a new project, you import your packages you already have developed before, or maybe there's a third party community plugin or, or, or packets. And, you know, day one, you already have like blocks available in a theme. So this is the end goal, you know, day one development, uh, we already start working on the website instead of figuring out how to parse styles or whatever, you know. So... Uh, the project phases, you know, we have like a roadmap uh, because we're trying to think about current steps, next steps, what's in the future, just, uh, you know, uh, trying to, you know, get feedback also from the community as well. Uh, phase one, uh, we are uh, here. We are basically phase two, but first one was like the the method to implement, you know, the a method to deconstruct and deconstruct the block data efficiently. This is what the plugin does. And the phase two is the Faust connector, this Faust integration we do between uh, the the plugin and the and the Faust uh, framework. And we also have a few more phases in the future. Uh, we're trying to do something with theme.json and the reusable block library. So, so you you all have to use the same theme.json for both places. And also having the same, uh, like a uh, basic uh, block library, as a you know, as the starter pack, I would say. So you can uh, you know take uh, you know day one, and you 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 already have uh, working with uh, the Gutenberg editor in the headless uh, or decoupled website, I would say. Uh, we also providing tutorials of how to develop new blocks, so you not you don't have to. Figure out your own way, you know. We can provide tutorials as well, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. And can uh, I jump in real yeah. quick, Theo? I definitely have. I just, y'all know I love to talk, and I've just got to yeah. have a layer of commentary over this a little bit just to give y'all some props. Okay. Um, because, you know, definitely when one of the things I see being valuable with what this team is working on is that when you, before, when you approach like, how do I do blocks in headless WordPress? Like, there was a bunch of different methodologies. Thing that you said right there's no there was no one opinionated solution and as you all started building this like more and more people started coming out well i'm working on this you know thing over in isolation and you know to see that sort of coalesce into one thing uh is really great and just wanted to give you all props like as somebody on the outside watching your engagement with the developer community around building this tool these tools like that um, that feedback loop has just gotten phenomenal like i've seen so many really cool things come to the framework or come into your, you know, roadmap about the Gutenberg blocks, just based on feedback from the community. So if you're sitting here and you're interested, you know, definitely this, this team is one that is open to developer opinion, wants to hear your opinions. Um, so share those on GitHub issues or uh, in our discord. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, we do, we do need feedback. It's critical for us to get, uh, because we 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 are just uh, creating the software now, and we we're gonna improve it, of course. But we need help from the community. You know, we are open to PRs or suggestions, uh, any sort of feature requests. You know, all our uh, repos are public, so you can log tickets or you know you can review it as well. Because we do have a cadence of reviewing all of the stuff, all of the stuff in due time. You know, so yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so OS3, phase four and fifth, it's basically, we, we still have a lot of ideas and practical stuff uh, in place. Uh, we, we're trying to do basically make sure that everything is cohesive and stable and reliable. And also try to think about uh, supporting the wider ecosystem, like different plugins 
uh, you know, things that, you know, people are using most of the time, you know, because they might be using some sort of uh, good and better plugins that they would like to use in the grappled website. So they may, there might be like a solution there, you know. So we want to look at uh, also those things, you know. Uh, but again, there's also more faces because we, we're still uh, we're still getting feedback, so we get more uh, things that we can improve and you know implement as well, innovate as well. So, uh, so yeah, the second part, yeah, the uh, this is the plugin part. Uh, so the details of the plugin is similar to similar plugins you've seen before. Uh, it basically explo exposes the blocks as uh, GraphQL types. Uh, this is the main thing uh, about it. Uh, and there is a documentation for each block. That's a, that's a good thing because you don't have to actually uh, figure out what the attributes are. You just go through the WP GraphQL ID and check the types, check the attributes, uh, what sort of available. Uh, it's self-documented. There is also no settings. Uh, they, you don't have to configure anything. Just You just install it and it exposes those fields. Uh, and then the for ne the connector side, this is a, the packets uh, that you have to install in your Faust uh, or your Faust site. Uh, this basically is just a simple wrapper for now. Uh, we plan to do enhance it. We do make some more, add more stuff, but for now it's a simpler wrapper. It's just a simple uh, uh, piece of uh, functionality that you know it's uh, it's basically. Uh, for now, it's a component that uh, takes the data as you get from the API and feeds this into this component. And this component is basically the renderer. It will render all the blocks that you have on the page. And it could be any anything. It could be in the page or a post or in a certain location. So it's just like a, a component. Uh, the part of the configuration is to provide the actual implementation of the blocks. This is uh, the part of that basically ejects uh, the implementation of the block. So you need a provider. So we have like a WordPress uh, blocks provider. The name is a little bit large, but maybe we can figure it out, make it smaller. Uh, so it just, for now, it takes a config. The config is, uh, for now, it's uh, a list of blocks that you have implemented. You feed this into this, uh, this provider, and then the viewer will have access to the blocks. So, the viewer and the provider will just make sure that uh, they render the blocks in the correct order and the correct you know, representation. You know? uh, and both, the thing is, both the connector and the plugin, they are meant, almost development meant to be together. So we make some assumptions how they should work together. But if you just want to try only the plugin, you'll, you can still uh, work with only the plugin. Uh, because they are not actually coupled together in terms of you know interfaces or whatever, so it's just like uh, decoupled in be between them. But the conventions uh, between them are like uh, they have some conventions that we assume that it, they work together, you know. Uh, so, and we also provide accessibility and customization. Uh, we have some hooks and filters, so. Uh, you can extend the way or customize the way that you can uh, fetch the data or render the data in the connector. Uh, so yeah, we we just try to do this because we want to make sure that, you know the development experience the development experience is nice. Uh, we have the, the good uh, development ergonomics, and we can use those two things to actually improve. You know, fill the missing gaps because there are gaps that we may find, uh, you know, during get, getting the feedback, you know, when getting the feedback, we're going to find a lot of gaps. So we try to, you know, fill the gaps and then make sure that, you know, everything is robust and makes works as expected, you know. Uh, so I have a demo now. Uh, let me uh, get out of my uh, screen, uh, this the demonstration. So... So I'm gonna showcase the uh, the plugin and the the connector how you know how they arrange together and then you know how they will actually render on the website you know 
So have this uh, have this uh, website, this uh, WordPress site. It's just a new site, you know. I just have it for demonstration purposes. I just installed some plugins. The most important plugins that you have to you need to have is the Faust uh, because we are using Faust. The uh, there is the WP GraphQL plugin, of course, and the, this uh, WP GraphQL content blocks, which is the extension of the WP GraphQL. So once you have that installed, uh, you also have to configure the connector. And uh, at some point, you will implement your blocks. You, you put your blocks uh, in, a, in a folder or in a package, and you have them only one folder here. You have uh, those exports here. So you put all your blocks in one place. And because those blocks are fed, they are fed into this uh, provider. It will be available for the for the pages, you know. So once you have this implementation, I have the implementation, for example, for a paragraph, image, uh, columns, column, code, and also have two examples of a third-party block. It's like a plugin I downloaded from from uh, from a plugin registry. And I also provided two implementations of it, you know, just to showcase, you know, how to combine those things together. So uh, I have a page here. Uh, this page is just like a simple page, you know, nothing complicated, you know, just a paragraph. Maybe I have a background here. Uh, let me edit this. I think this is the edit here. So I have a paragraph here. I can, yeah, I have a paragraph. I have a text column. Uh, I have an image. I have uh, this is a rating block. This is like a, a third party plugin I downloaded. I can change this stuff here. I can change the color uh, of the text. Uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, parameters here. A lot of attributes. Uh, there is like uh, yeah. There is another one. This is the I would say this is the call to action block. Steps, uh, properties, attributes, uh, head headlines, everything. There's a lot of, you know, depends on the plugin, you know. Some plugins are easy to customize. Some plugins are really, you know, really bare bones. You know, there's no customization. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is the page. And then when I go back to, this is the, uh, this is basically, uh, yeah, I'll uh, have an example also with a code block. This is a core block. Uh, from uh, WordPress core. This is called code block. So you just uh, put your code there and it will uh, it will render the code uh, pre-formatted. So let's go to the, uh, the page. I think this is the code block on our headless site. So uh, so basically when I when I change something, uh, some stuff here, I can change the size, maybe the the border radius can make it two pixels, or maybe I have the change the text black, maybe it's more emphasized. So when I update that, I can also preview as well. This preview functionality also works. So so I suppose the default experiences will be to match the styles. You know, every time I change something of the styles, this should reflect to the the coupled website. So this is the idea. Uh, it also happens also with the uh, with the other post that I created. Uh, hello world here. So it's the same as our uh, the same should happen in our uh, uh, page with the hello world. So by default, you know, as long as you have the two components. Uh, already developed, then every you know the default you know the default uh, publishing experience, the editor, the one ones who are going to publish or edit the content, they're gonna see what they're gonna get. You know, we see what you see is what you get. You know, similar. So, so you see, you see, they see the columns. You see some gaps. You see some uh, some sort of paddings. They should be able to have the same look and feel here without any weird effects, you know. Uh, so they will be able to use the blocks uh, without any constraints, you know, uh, with uh, using the theme, uh, theme parameters here, you know. Uh, that's important as well. 
uh, or maybe they'll be able to change the colors here, maybe a specific value. I don't know, depends. They should be able to do that without like limitations, you know, ideally. So uh, if I go to this site again, uh, I think. So yeah, it should reflect should reflect the styles uh, accordingly. So, so yeah, this is the the thing now. Uh, now, how do you get from uh, here to there? I mean, this is a call magic here. Uh, so it needs combination of things, you know, a combination of uh, applying the correct styles, the correct markup. Uh, depend of the block, depending on the block, if it's like a dynamic block, sometimes the block is dynamic. It has no React components, nothing. It's just like a uh, render on the server. So, so there's like workarounds for it. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of, lot of ifs, a lot of stuff that, you know, they're not, you have to do different stuff depending on the circumstances, you know. So, uh, so that's the demo part. Uh, I have a more two more slides here. Uh, here, so yeah, and yeah, so, Theo, can I jump in real quick? Because there's something yes. I wanted to call out from David that David mentioned. So um, he said, "Good to note: if you don't specifically create a block component, Faust will default to using the rendered HTML. So you don't need to, you know, necessarily create all the components uh, yes. ahead of time." Could could you speak to that for just a second? That sounds like a really great like. Yeah, I mean, degradation. So, yeah, it, it's a fallback. The fallback is the default experience. You know, when you say, I want to, let's say, an example that I have a block that I haven't implemented yet, default it will render to the static HTML, which, you know, depends on the kind of the block that you render. Some of the blocks, for example, the button here is a button here. I haven't implemented the button in my uh, site. So now, uh, if uh -huh. I go to the implementation part, where is it? I'm, I'm always losing the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always losing this uh, this the site, you know, the the correct site. So uh, it will default to, where is it? Is it here? Yeah, you see, the default the functionality for a button is like this part, which is kind of non-existent. You know, it's not a yeah. button, but it looks like a button. So it's not great, but. Uh, Currently, we, we do have like a, a thing in our roadmap to actually make, uh, we can customize the default block. Uh, so you can, pro it's, as a developer, you can customize it. Uh, but for now, it's just a default to a this simple HTML uh, as well, from the API. Yeah, and, and that kind of leaves people where they started, right? Before the content yeah. blocks. So you were mostly just, here. here's my HTML, dumping that into an article and then, you know, dealing with all that on your front end. So... That's a yeah. really great fallback yeah. that uh, you can sort of adopt this incrementally if you want to, it sounds like. Yes. Um, yes. That this so. is probably a recommended approach to have like a, a list of blocks that you already know that you have implemented and support, of course. And then incrementally add, as you develop stuff, you can incrementally add them to your site. You know, it's also this option. Uh, so. Uh, cool. And, and just a reminder to folks as we're going, definitely jump um, or don't, sorry, not jump, dump some questions in the chat. Um, I know, Theo, we've got one and I see you got a slide for Q&A, so I'll, I'll let you get there and sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, do the last slide and then we're going to get some questions, you know. Uh, yeah, so we, we do have like some sort of uh, goals here. We need to definitely want to use this uh, Theme.json uh, for solutions of styling because styles could be, you don't want to duplicate styles between the couple site and the editor. So you want to have like a parity between them. Uh, and theme.json is a guide, it is a nice one because it affects a lot of stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> so you ideally want to have some sort of, uh, have sort of some like theme, a common theme between them. Uh, without uh, actually doing uh, extra work, you know. So uh, there is also, yeah, I mean, we, we're thinking about uh, things like uh, the block visibility plugin, because this is like an, a, a nice plugin that uh, controls how the blocks are visible as well. 
And the other one, the last one is quite interesting because it's one of the things that, you know, you may find it quite common if working with Gatsby is Gatsby links or working with Next.js is Next.js links or images. It would be nice to have like an API that, you know, you decompose the, you know, the this part, decompose this text into elements, like JSON elements. And then you can use like, a, a, you can use a function that you can replace the links into Next.js links, uh, whatever, images to something else. Then you just need to use a function that uh, put this put this back together with the correct, uh, you know, the correct components. Because the, the problem here is, you know, you may write your component for Next.js, but if you want to use it on Gatsby, it's not going to work, you know. <laughs> It's gonna break, you know. Uh, so you want to change all of this. You have to have some sort of control there. And we, with this API, basically, we uh, we want to actually have like a on the GraphQL API, you can actually request uh, the content to be decomposed into elements that have like some sort of markup. And then you can use the functions to a, fun a specific functions to put them back together, you know. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is like some sort of uh, ideas here, uh, you know, f filling the gaps, which I would say, you know. So yeah, uh, any uh, questions here, Brady, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So we got one um, in the chat about, I guess, how would this work with ACF blocks? I mean, uh, we don't actually require any ACF blocks. I mean, by, by default, it will it works on the Word, WordPress core, so we 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 also we don't require basically Gutenberg here. We don't have to use Gutenberg; it's de it's deactivated. Uh, you only work basically the the plugin works with uh, the Lancer block uh, API. So there's a there's a function in WordPress core that says Lancer block type. This is what we need basically. So everything that is registered on the server side is a registry. And then okay. we take this registry and we map it to just uh, WordPress, uh, WP GraphQL uh, fields and components. But we do have uh, we do have like a few tickets in our backlog to investigate the ACF because we want to support it in terms of handling uh, specific use cases of ACF uh, for sure. Because there is like a, there is like some sort of uh, some adjustments we we need to make. But for the by default, uh, if the if your block uses this function and it's registered, then it will be available in our API here. It will be available and in the list of blocks. So right. this, and your, this, this solution happen. also depends on there being a block.json file, correct, of some kind? Yes, that because that's the key thing. Otherwise, it's gonna be hard to actually map those things into GraphQL fields. Uh, although you could still create your own block to JSON, that's that's one of the benefits. Although it's I don't know it's if it's it's if, if it's missing, then either you control your block, you can add it. If you don't control the block, then you should question whether you should use it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> because it's uh, the standard way of using blocks is creating a block, block to JSON, uh, having this sort of template, the create block template creates all of these things for you. So you have to basically just uh, adopt a little bit of the the flow, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but yeah, they're probably, they're probably workarounds for sure. Uh, it's just uh, for now, we, we assume that it's easier, it's effortless. You don't have to do anything on your plugin side. You just uh, have the list of blocks here that uh, using using this uh, list of uh, let's say block type it will be available in the list automatically without ever having to do anything you know okay uh, cool yeah um, I mean we can see all those uh, you know third third yes, party blocks yes yes I there. have like third party as well here uh, it's some sort of good in the blocks you know there yeah. are pretty more a lot of them but you know I just found out that. These are ones really nice because they are dynamic blocks, but they have implementation React. So I was able to reuse most of the code there. Pretty nice. Yeah. 
And so, so do you have any best practices around like how, so I know you, you, you obviously like sucked in those third party blocks. What did that reconstruction of, I guess, the react component in your Faust app look like? Did you dive into the yeah. code for the ultimate blocks and like, you know, rip out parts of it? Yeah. Um, this is the hard part. You know, this is the tricky part. If you are lucky, you may find that there is a react component straight from the implementation there. Okay. Uh, or you may want to actually use that's the thing. You may because you, you, could, have, you have some flexibility and you could you copy use, or not. Yeah. Yeah. You can use either the, the same uh, view as ideally you want to use the same because it's gonna be look and feel, you know. You don't want to have some sort of different stuff. Uh, it's not gonna look nice. Uh, the UX experience is not gonna be nice. But the the implementation for this is gonna be similar or almost the same. You know, I mean, the, the code would be the same almost. Some of the components or the styles would be the same. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it depends. If you have the implementation of the React component, you can use it straight away. If the component is uh, basically only HTML, if it's a dynamic block, then okay. There are options to say, okay, I want to create a React component out of it. So it's not going to be a hard lift. If you want to actually use this block, you can actually create a React component out of the uh, HTML, you know, because there's no React implementation. There's nothing. Yeah. The only thing that's there is the editor stuff, which is not uh, relevant, you know. Yeah. And, and hold on. Maybe this is the answer to that question, right? So we got another one in chat about how do you yeah. implement support for dynamic blocks in Faust? For example, the latest post block that needs to fetch posts from the database or a custom block that renders data from a custom post type. Yes, you see those blocks are those blocks are really tricky uh, because they are not, it's like an abstraction of a block that it's does, uh, you know, get the posts block, but that's not the actual, this is really tricky. This is not the actual way of to fetch posts in the headless decoupled world, you know. When you want to fetch blocks, you just use these posts, nodes, and fetch the blocks. So if there is like, you know, fetch the, the data, right? So for this, it's part of uh, an unanswered question for now. Uh, some of the blocks are okay. really hard to actually translate into actual blocks that you can actually use in a nice way because they are not mapping nicely into GraphQL components, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I think there's an awesome thing about having some unanswered questions at this point. Um, cause like, yeah. I think that's part of what, what gives us the possibility to create something really cool here. Right. People obviously have a lot of needs, a lot of opinions. So yeah. a lot of this, there are still some unanswered questions, folks. So like definitely ho hop in, engage with this team, tell them what you, what you want to be able to do. Um, and you know, like, I, I think all that stuff can be worked on. Yes, um, yes, exactly. Yeah. How does Faust handle SEO and metadata? That might be getting a little too far. And I think we actually had Joe show up. So I definitely okay. want to save some time. But I believe that also y'all are working on there. There's a, I, I feel like I saw a new feature right around SEO that might have been a plugin. Yes. I mean, uh, SEO in the, the couple world, you know, it, it, it's a lot of things, you know. Uh, I'm not an expert. So, we, you can Next.js, for example, has an SEO plugin. Uh, so you can definitely use. Uh, now, if you want to query, there is like a lot of things that we have in our roadmap for bridging between WordPress SEO stuff, like maybe some plugins like Yoast SEO or something to your, uh, to, to your decoupled site. But that's probably something we, we still have to, to delve into more detail. <laughs> For sure. Uh, let me stop there now if you want uh, just to yeah. give some time for so. Yeah, awesome. And if there are any other questions for Theo, throw them in the chat. We can we can have him answer real quick. Um, like I said, yes, Joe braved a snowstorm in snowshoes and then he got on a snowmobile to go to a park or something. That, that may be um, a little bit of an embellishment, but thank you, Joe, for all of your dedication to Headless WordPress. Um, and we might have a few minutes. I think we'll probably have a few minutes left at the end just for some sort of general questions like that. So if you got anything else that you want Theo to answer, um, we'll definitely loop back around to the question cycle. Joe, you ready to roll? You need another second? Yeah, we are ready to roll. Thanks, Jeff. Awesome. Now, thank you, sir.
Yeah. So uh, hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Joe. I'm uh, or Joe Fosco. I'm on uh, working with the headless team uh, building Faust here. So yeah, let me share my screen and uh, got a demo here for you of the uh, new toolbar that we'll be releasing uh, really soon. And Do you like need Jeff screen sharing uh, privileges. Oh, no, cool. Like we're good. Awesome. Yeah. Like Jeff said, I'm, I'm mobile now. So excuse um, any sort of a, uh, <laughs> let's see here. All, all right, cool. So Faust WP getting started. So I'm just wanted to, to demo this out of the example project. So for those of you who just want to get up and running quickly, um, basically just going to kind of go through what it would take now to get that showing. This is an opt-in feature. Uh, it's known as experimental right now. So just like our plugin system, uh, we just have it behind that experimental flag to allow the community to t test it out, get some feedback, and um, make sure that you know it's in the right spot before we have formally release it. Uh, but this is available to play around with uh, on the Faust JS repo today. So in the example project here, uh, just I guess let me back up here. Um, what is <laughs> what is the uh, Faust toolbar? So the Faust toolbar is essentially we're we're calling it that. Uh, basically, it's a clone of the WordPress toolbar, the WP Admin Bar up top. Some of you might know it as WP Admin Bar. I know it's been changed to a uh, toolbar as well. So as far as um, Faust is concerned, we're just calling it the Faust toolbar. Uh, so to enable it here, uh, first thing we want to do is experimental toolbar. There's a flag. So you can set this in your Faust config. And we are just going to set that to true. And that will bring up the, the toolbar in itself. There is another uh key thing to this toolbar here right so we don't want this toolbar showing up for just anyone visiting your site uh so there is it is hidden behind auth so that was released um or we we had some recent auth updates that went into uh faust the other day uh so this is pulling that stuff in so i just have a quick login page really rough just to um simulate that process but essentially once we, we log in, that toolbar is going to show up and developers and publishers will be able to quickly access those uh, posts and pages back in WP Admin. So just a quick little, uh, you know, un unstyled thing here. Again, this is just to get us in. So disregard everything in here. If we go back to the main site. So you you might be wondering why does it look like this we do not um we shipped it with the styles separately and that is intentional to allow uh y'all to you know if you want to make it if you want to change it up um maybe you're not a fan of the work the wordpress admin default styles uh you can totally build your own or just customize the heck out of it for um for yourself or your clients uh so first thing I guess the second thing, sorry, after that is uh, adding the uh, importing the styles here. So I'm just going to Im import it into the uh, app, uh, app.js file, the next app file. Let's save that. Boom. So we have, uh, let me get rid of this here. Sorry about that. Again, sorry, I'm uh, mobile here, so I'm constrained to just the one monitor. Yeah, so you yeah, can see that one monitor life is that one monitor life is rough, Joe. It, it is it is <laughs> yeah so there it is we have a quick link back to wordpress this is uh being fed by the env uh that's in the faust the faust project um and then just a quick link it's the same same exact link to graphql ide uh that graphql provides uh, the wp graphql provides uh let's go back here and you'll notice on the front page, want to call out, um, since you can't actually edit a front page that is a template page, um, we're going to go to page markup and formatting. And you'll notice that the edit page is now there. Um, so that's dynamically only going to show if there is something to edit. Wow. That will automatically um, 
you know, change the language to the post type that, that it's on. So of course a page is a post um, technically. So if we go to hello world, we can see that it now says edit post. So the same thing um, will happen, you know, if you have project or books, whatever those, those custom post types are. Uh, yeah, so as far as the account goes, again, we, we just took the styles from the WordPress core, um, WordPress core admin bar styles. So everything is basically, we just try to get it one-to-one -one parity at, at least for like the, you know, initial, um, what, what we ship. But the cool thing about this is how easy it is to customize. So I'm going to go into that now and uh, show you all how you can add your own custom nodes, much like uh, WordPress, you know, traditional WordPress theme development or plugin development. You can go ahead and add whatever, um, whatever you need to kind of like how WP GraphQL has added this handy dandy uh, link here. Yeah, so and let me hop in to your real yeah, quick, yeah. Joe. I've just got to add some commentary because this is awesome. This is uh, honestly my first time really seeing this feature uh, in its totality. And I think it's really cool. And I just want to like underscore, I think one of the really neat things about the way y'all are choosing to build Faust. Cause like, obviously some people do headless cause like maybe they're not happy with some of the stuff in WordPress. Um, but obviously some other people want to, want to keep parts of WordPress around, whether that's like the template hierarchy or what y'all are doing with the admin bar. And so I really admire the way that you've kind of built this to try and satisfy both of those people at once. And that's a hard thing to do where, a lot of this is sort of opt-in at whatever level you want. And so if you want something that doesn't look like WordPress and doesn't have the admin bar and doesn't use the WP template hierarchy, like you've given them a set of features that still makes it easier to build while also sort of satisfying those people that do want something a little bit uh, more, you know, modeled after, I guess, WordPress. So kudos to y'all. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. Yeah. This is, um, we, we definitely prioritize the, uh, developer experience for y'all. Um, just really trying to make things as not, you know, not opinionated, but like you said, opt in and, uh, use, use what you need. Um, yeah. So right now, I guess on, on that note too, um, experimental toolbar, how it's in the config now, of course, once that is uh, good to go and we decide to, uh, release it, uh, formally that will go away, but we will have a config option to disable the uh, toolbar. So you can imagine like the WordPress user has a, uh, has a setting, right? Hide or show admin bar, uh, for that user in, in traditional WordPress, we can honor that on the headless side, uh, but also provide an, an override for those folks that maybe don't want that, um, or want their publishers to, uh, you know, see that on the, on the front. Um, yeah, so going into the plugin system, so leveraging the already awesome and existing uh, Faust plugin system here, um, I'm just going to kind of go through a guide on how to uh, add this up. So yeah, we have, uh, let's start in the Faust config. So experimental plugins, uh, I already have one made here, so I'm just going to import it uh, for the sake of this demo. Uh, Let's call it new custom toolbar. So we are importing that. Again, I already have this uh, plopped in here. So let's look under the hood here. So your regular uh, Faust plugin system class, we are extending Faust plugin. Lots of info on that uh, on the faustjs.org site if you want to learn more. Uh, but for the sake of this demo here, uh, we have one filter as of right now, uh, toolbar nodes, and that is just an array of all of the toolbar nodes, as we're calling them, uh, for the whole toolbar. So a couple, there's actually four current um, options. So each toolbar node is essentially an object, and you can assign it primary or secondary. Um, and what that means here, in the uh, context of the WordPress toolbar, we're saying this is the primary section, so off to the left, uh, and then the secondary areas off to the right. So internally, we're calling that secondary area to load the um, to load the account section. So if if you want to add something over to that, maybe it's like a language switcher, 
um, for you know using next um, next language features. Uh, that's totally totally easy to do here. So I have two two nodes, um, just a regular node and a custom node with a sub menu, and just some basic uh, JSX co components down here. So one thing uh, to note is that we are exposing um, some of the components we created. They're just really simple components to kind of just give it better readability and um, allow you to easily make your uh, toolbar nodes if you choose to. You know, you can totally make your own panels and whatever you want. You know, that that toolbar to do. But uh, yeah. So for the sake of this demo, we got one toolbar item and. Uh, the drop down. Let me flip back here. There we go. So, uh, custom node, and then the custom node with sub menu. Again, these are really like vanilla examples, um, just to kind of get the point across. But we kind of see uh, the community just really going, you know, taking us to the next level here, mm -hmm. um, and being able to provide really a uh, just a really custom, uh, unique solution for your for your use cases. Um, also, too, given that we can, we have access to all the toolbar nodes. We also have access to um, contacts, which right now it just contains the uh, seed node for for each page. So that's that's kind of how we are flipping back and forth between edit post and edit page. So that's available for y'all to uh, also take advantage of. Um, I know I'm running running short on time here, so just to uh, speed up. Um, yeah, just we got about five minutes, Joe, and we can right, cool. definitely go over a minute or two. And folks, if you if you got a drop, um, definitely you know go ahead and do that. We'll we'll put the video and recording of this up on YouTube really shortly after it ends. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, Let's say if you wanted to, um, you know, get get the uh, seed node and just kind of check what is what. Um, that that's totally po possible. Maybe you want some node to only show up on a, I don't know, on a on a custom po post type. Um, but also too, maybe you don't even want some of our default nodes here, and you want to just create your own custom solution um, or tweak some of these. You can totally do that. Just you know, we're just merging the, these two arrays down here, so. You can just remove them and uh, do what you need to. So very similar pattern to the um, or to the developer experience with adding a toolbar in traditional WordPress, um, and and that is definitely an, an intentional here. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, open it up to questions or however you want to do that, Jeff. But uh, yeah, yeah, sure. If you don't mind, well, I'll take back over the screen real quick. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and we'll just see up and Sam threw us another uh, poll question there. So definitely, like I said, that definitely helps us guide uh, what we do here. So awesome. Thanks, Joe. Just another reminder about Decode. Um, please sign up. We would love to see you there. You'll know, get more awesome content like this. Um, but yeah, I think we can just sort of hop right into questions. I know the last one I saw in chat was, is there like, does GraphQ, are these, is the menu stuff fetched by WP GraphQL, or is that like config based? And maybe we need some elaboration. Um, and then somebody else said, could you do this conditionally based on user role? Um, so would that yeah. like user info be available in the filter? Yes, so uh, as, it, as it stands right now or how we have it that, um, it's it is client side. Sorry, I didn't mention that before. The uh, toolbar is being rendered client side, so every single node um, can just reach out and grab what they need to. You can take advantage of the authentication hooks if you need to make okay. an authenticated request. But there's no right now like one big query, like the seed query go going out. That's just up to um, up to the up to the implementer um, how you really want to do that. Yeah. Are there any? Oh, and then <clears throat> just to touch on the uh, conditional based on user role, totally possible. Uh, we were talking about that as a team, just, you know, how we can uh, leverage that a little bit more. But yeah, just really 
adding whatever you need to in that user query and uh, returning it. So yeah, we it's, okay. it's you could totally do role based nodes or however you want. Very cool. So we got a couple of other. Um, I know David asked for some details about auth. Um, these are just sort of more specific questions. And someone asked, is there specific functionality for handling custom post um, meta fields? And I guess it sounds like, yeah, I mean, depending on where you wanted to get those, those could either be added to page queries, or like you said, you've got the ability to have your node reach out and make whatever query you want from the toolbar, so. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and then anything specific y'all wanted to speak to about the auth features that that just, I think, got re-released? Yeah, how did the actual login work? Uh, what if the word admin, WordPress admin was password protected? Yeah, so the login right now, um, how, how it works, it's, it's the same concepts as uh, the GQD version of the last version of Faust. Uh, so we have a local, um, a local way and a uh, redirect. So the example th that I gave that was really just vanilla was a uh, local. Mm -hmm. um, that was getting the token just behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and there's some diagrams on the site if you want to look at both of those strategies in the docs. Um, that Joe described. And I think it implements sort of like an OAuth like flow under the hood with the plugin, right? So you've got the front end framework that has some authentication hooks. And then that utilizes, I think, routes that are added by the Faust WordPress plugin to sort of facilitate that stuff. Um, and, and I think I, I want to say, like, I don't think I saw you enter a password. So did you just like hard code your credentials into that? Like, that might have been what people were like heat up on um, for the demo. But normally, yeah, you can make a login form, and we've got some examples of that in the old one, and we'll get some up for the new one. But that's a great question. Yeah, so any other questions before we sort of wrap up here for today? I know we're over by just a couple of minutes. Um, if you got anything lingering, definitely throw it in the chat. Uh, huge, huge shout out to both Joe and Theo for taking the time to come share these details with the community. Like These are two awesome features that I think you know, people have been asking for in different ways. I'm really excited about the possibilities of both the WP GraphQL content blocks, like React component library, that that seems just super amazing and should enable us to do some really cool stuff. The, the toolbar to me also has a lot of potential just because that's something that obviously has been um, augmented for a long time in traditional WordPress. And there are probably lots of use cases that we could help out content creators and publishers do stuff more easily with, you know, where whatever their headless setup is. Um, so huge shout out to this team. And again, like I've said multiple times during this presentation to watch the community engagement that all of these software developers have around this, these, this product is just fantastic. So join us in discord, um, you know, definitely stop by their GitHub repo, leave them some feedback. If you think that they're doing something really well, tell them if, if you think, you know, there's something else that you need uh, to see in this feature set before you adopt it. We definitely want to hear and prioritize all of your feedback. Um, so again, thank you for coming. Thanks to Joe and Theo for being such awesome presenters. Um, and we look forward to seeing you maybe at Decode or maybe at our next headless WordPress sort of webinar office hours thing. Um, thanks again, and everybody have a great day.